All right, welcome back. Let's quickly delve into the interview. Like I mentioned earlier, Dr. Jumoko Duwale, a special advisor to President Buhari, on the ease of doing business, is here with me today. Welcome to you, Dr. J. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. You know, I got that from, from uh, my friend, uh, you know, Adobe, uh, Deloitte. Yes. Yeah, my Your whole team. Started yeah. from my students. Yes. And my boss. Yes. And they call you Dr. Dr. J. So <laughs> since then, you know, I can't call you Dr. J, Dr. J, even when speaking with you. So welcome, Dr. J. Thank you. We have so much to talk about today. And I hope, how many minutes do we have? About 35 minutes or so. I'm seeing... Uh, <laughs> So let's get started. The World Bank on September 29th um, approved the SABA uh, uh, program uh, to assist states. But mm -hmm. I just want you in a few seconds to tell me how we got there Ooh. in terms of like the journey. I know it's, it's a long journey, yeah, but I'll, just I'll like summarize. in a minute, yes. how the history of how we came about the SABA program and why you think the World Bank did commit to this program. Okay, it's a, one of our most important interventions, the collaboration between the PEBEC, the federal government and all state governments through the National Economic Council, the NEC. So since 2017, PEBEC and NEC went into a collaboration which has delivered a lot of progress. Uh, World Bank used to rank states. Nigeria had its own subnational ease of doing business report uh, from the World Bank and that collaboration led to a lot of action cohesive action across the country. So the PEBEC Secretariat has been working with state governments for a long time. We also had our lituation tour. We've had several stakeholder engagements, but the lituation tour went to every region, talking to young entrepreneurs. So as we were looking at sustainability for the intervention, the new World Bank uh, country director, then new, uh, mm -hmm. Shubham, in, in 2019, floated this idea. They've had uh, little sort of pilots of ease of doing business programs, but this will be the first one that will be at such a scale around the world uh, that focuses on an entire country, every state. And that's because for PEBEC, it's no state left behind. We work with every single state. Now the idea, we, we co-designed this program, SABA, uh, to deepen the ease of doing business intervention that has already been going around states. We have, a, of course, our homegrown ease of doing business report, which focused on four uh, homegrown interventions. So infrastructure and security for businesses, um, regulatory environment, um, access to skills, readiness. So those are the kinds of, of indicators that we had at our own level. Partnering with the World Bank, we decided to focus on four broad areas again. That's on the SABA. The first one has to do with um, just making an enabling environment for land registration, using land as access to credit for MSMEs. And then the second one has to do with the infrastructure. And we focus for that intervention on broadband, so reducing the cost of broadband so that more states can have connectivity. The third one has to do with trying to scale up businesses. And for that, we focused on a framework for PPPs, making sure that all the states have PPPs. And the last one is our standard. It's always there, our regulatory intervention. So a harmonizing of taxes, making sure that there are more small claims courts across the country, just the usual payback framework. So it's an expanded um, horizon for us to deepen the intervention and to make sure that indeed every state has the opportunity because now there's money on the table to make it happen. So the 750, and by the way, uh, when you heard me say SABA, S-A-B-E-R, yes. what it means is State's Action on Business Enabling Reforms Program. Uh, so when you hear SABA, that's actually what yes. it means. We're not just saying something, <laughs> you know, uh, out, out there. So that's actually what it means. So the World Bank approved $750 million in September for this. So yeah. with these four pillars, is that what this money is meant to facilitate? Yes, yes. So the money is meant to facilitate when <coughs> states deliver, so it's a performance for results. So when you, you expend, then you get a reimbursement. So the states have to do the work ahead, then it's verified, then you get a reimbursement. So that's a, a program for results in a nutshell. Now some of the money, $20 million out of the money, is for technical assistance to make sure that we're not just leaving states alone, there's a team, uh, the Governor's Forum Secretariat, 
partners with the states and with some of the uh, PEBEX sectorate as well to make sure that whatever consultants they need to make this happen, because we're not just going to ask them to deliver specific, because it's a very detailed program, we're not just going to ask them to deliver results without helping them along the way. So it's for, there's a small component for technical assistance, but most of it is for the reimbursement. So each state can earn up to $55 million over the three-year period for specific reforms that are laid out each year. And before you can earn the money, there's a verification protocol, independently verified, and then you can access the funds at the end of the year. Okay, so each state is to get $55 million a each... A maximum of $55 maximum million dollars over the three-year period. Over the three-year period concerning this four, if you are able to perform yes. along these lines of land registration, infrastructure, yes. scaling up businesses, and regulatory reforms. Yes. So or will it be a maximum of $55 million for each of the pillars no, no, or no, no, for no, four? No, 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 no. I need us to... It's all four. Four, okay. So under these four, it's broken down into disbursement-linked indicators. So there are about eight of them. And so there are specific things that states need to do each year. So the state has to have an action plan, and we'll be working on those um, later on this month, at the, no, at the end of November, rather. And that would, would deliver the actual action plan that the state has to implement in 2023. At the end of verification, you get the money. Then 2024, action plan. At the end of verification, you get the money. Okay, mm. so um, is it three years? Yes. Okay, so from 2022 to 2025? From 2023 Three to 2025. Three to 2025. Yes. Okay, so have you started seeing a buy-in from states already? Oh, what yes. have their responses been? Oh, Anything concerning money, the states oh, are always phenomenal. good. So that's but a nice it, program yes. for results. Yes, so, so we, we have the, the carrots, we have the stick. stick. You know, we have our um, World, Bank, uh, World Bank discontinued, but thankfully we had started our own homegrown ease of doing business report. So the states are already ranked, and the first one was, was released last year. Gombe was number one. Um, the next iteration, the second edition, is coming out next month. So we already have the recommendations. This is based on what private sectors say about each state's business environment. We have those indicators. We revised our methodology to include a, f a fifth indicator called economic opportunity. The states have full buy-in to both these projects. Uh, the reform champions of the states are committed. The states have teams working on this. Most of them have ease of doing business councils, and the governors are very involved as well. Okay. The $750 million is a loan. Mm -hmm. So was it the federal government that took the loan on behalf yes. of states? Yes, the federal government took the loan. So let me give you a bit of background. Mm. You, you, you only gave me a few seconds. There mm. was an initial program that the World Bank had partnered with states through the NGF, and Ministry of Finance called SIFTAS. Now yes, that's Siftas, on yes, yeah. so, so that's on fiscal mm. transparency. So SIFTAS is just ending at the end of this year. So states now publish their accounts and they have things that we're roping into SABER. So as a prerequisite uh, to qualify, you have to continue to do those things and then you add these business environment uh, deliverables as well. Um, all the states are on board. We've gotten uh, um, approval from NEC. We've gotten approval from Governor's Forum. We've gotten approval from World Bank Board. So the federal government is taking it as a loan as part of its um, package. So the Ministry of Finance handling that with the National Assembly is just a small portion, but enough to incentivize states. Because what this is is that the catalytic effect will really benefit in a systemic way small and medium-sized enterprises. So yes, the federal government is taking the loan. It took the loan for SIFTAS. SIFTAS was a grant, but SABER is a loan on lending to states. Okay, so another acronym, SIFTAS, <laughs> which is S-F-T-A-S, <laughs> which is States Fiscal <laughs> Transparency, Accountability, and Sustainability Program. That's what SIFTAS <laughs> means. So that. You know, government you know, and World yeah. Bank is even worse. We like the acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to break it down for you yes, here yes, on, on yes. the show. Now, since it's a loan, do you have an idea when we're going to pay back and how much interest it came on? Well, it, it, it comes, that's really with Ministry of Finance. Finance. It's I part know. of the bundle. Yeah. It's part of the bundle. So the terms, but you know, World Bank, very low terms. Mm. So it's, it's something that is good to enable the business environment. So... 
I mean, the federal government felt that it was worth it, making this commitment to encourage the state governments. We've been partners since 2017, and states have been doing phenomenal work, really engaged. Uh, some states have been leading on tax harmonization, on, on, acts, on land registration, on, on several areas that private sector, it's a private sector driven initiative. So the, the pain points that private sector are feeling are the areas where we prioritize. So small claims courts coming up, we have seven mm. states having mm. small I'll claims courts. I'll be coming courts. to that a okay. little bit okay. later. So I, I yeah. will preempt so that, so, Yeah, so yeah. that we can look at it fully. I just wanted us okay. to uh, finish taking a look at the SABA okay. and, 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 and sift this. Uh, the, the question also now is I heard you clearly earlier where you said there will be technical assistance yes. to the states. Yeah. Uh, have we started seeing that already since the SABA program yes. has been approved? How many states have come on board to say, okay, fine, we need you guys to help us uh, yeah. execute this program? So we've been on this since 2017. So we've been working with states. On the, on the sidelines of the literation tour, we've always had technical meetings. Earlier this year, in March, we had a nationwide retreat here in Abuja with our reform champions from all states. We looked at the recommendations from the previous uh, report based on feedback from private sector. We also looked at the indicators. We've engaged very closely with all the commissioners of finance, mm -hmm. with all the regulatory agencies that will deliver these interventions to get their own buy-in and their own opinion and what exactly would take. Right now, the teams are having detailed sessions uh, so all year, sessions have been ongoing, and right now, just even these weeks, detailed sessions with the states, that's the World Bank and PEBEC Secretariat, the NGS Secretariat and Home Finance from Ministry of Finance, uh, working collaboratively with state governments to, to identify and itemize what will be delivered, how it will be delivered. And we have a sweetener called Prior Results, where there's a token on the table for states that are able to deliver particular reforms by 31st of December. So it's like a pre, mm. yes, taster. It's like a pre before the $55 million. Yes, dollars. Yes, How much is that? Yes, that's, it's just a small token. It's just a small token. Just a token. small token, just to encourage keen in. And, and states have been working, you know, we've worked together on World Bank subnational report. We've worked together on our own homegrown report. We've worked together on lituation tour. So on different areas that private sector have itemized as pain points, we've worked together on those interventions. So this is just another, um, really to deepen the subnational intervention. When you have money on the table, there's a way that, you know, mm. everybody sort of wakes up and keys in, and that's really what this is about. But it's also to create and galvanize systemic momentum. Because it's a refund, the states actually have to expend that amount, and we have to track the impact and get verification from private sector that these reforms have indeed been implemented, and then you get the refund. So okay. if you do halfway, you don't get the refund. Okay, the question also to you, Dr. Jumoke, is about how much attention do you pay to the day-to-day -day noise surrounding how states utilize funds? Uh, because, uh, you know, in recent past, we've not seen states being that prudent in terms of utilizing funds. Okay, we know perhaps World Bank or the, some of these multilateral institutions, they will just hold you by the juggler. <laughs> but what are the things around that part in terms that states can really utilize funds and not use the funds to do something else? or so just do it, let it just be cosmetic. No, uh, okay, people will no. see then, they go do something else. No, no for us it's basically a ring fence intervention, very, very tight protocol. And there's a strong verification, external auditors as well and um, feedback from private sector. So it's a whole ecosystem to deliver these results. If private sector doesn't say it's been done, and the action plans are developed alongside private sector and the states, and if the, if the states don't, if the private sector doesn't verify that these reforms have been done, then, the, then it's not counting for the states. So that's exactly why you're, uh, we're adding SIFTES also as, as a, as a um, a pre-eligibility a pre, um, criteria, and then the other criteria that the state needs to fulfill. So it's quite a tight program. Okay, let's talk about the business facilitation bill, uh, mm. which is also known as the Omnibus, uh, omnibus bill. Uh, uh, bill, which I, I understand has passed the second reading 
at uh, the House of Representatives. Oh, it's been passed. Yeah. It's been passed. Yes, passed second reading. No, 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 it's House been passed. Oh, it's been passed? Yes, on the 12th. On the 12th, it, it went to third reading and it's been passed at the House. Oh, it's been passed at yes, the House. So, yes, where, yes. so what's the progress report? Because that's what I actually okay, wanted to okay. ask. So, so we've been at it. Uh, we got our FEC approval. It's been a four-year journey. Okay. Working with uh, Section of Business Law, Nigerian Bar Association, working with over 40 law firms, working with Ministry of Justice and private law firms to deliver this draft bill. And we, um, PEBEC really supported. We got it through FEC. Um, the Attorney General was, is the head of that committee. And we got it into the National Assembly, transmitted to the National Assembly. And the National Assembly has been a long-term partner of the PEBEC. We've delivered um, four legislations already. Um, three, if you count Kama, they passed Kama, Kama twice. Yeah. And the omnibus bill has been moving very rapidly through the National Assembly. So it's gone through uh, all the readings and the public hearing at the House. So it was passed on the, on the 12th of October okay, by the House so of Reps. Okay. And the, the Senate, it's gone through two readings. So we're up for, for um, public hearing. It was to come up on last Monday, but because of the ministerial retreat, it was postponed. That's at the Senate? Yes, at the Senate. Mm. So we're awaiting um, public hearing and third reading at the Senate. At the Senate. To be passed. So after that? It comes back so to, to, the to the presidency. To the presidency. Yes, for assent. Okay, yes. so what will that, omni what does it seek to do? So the, the omnibus bill is, is, an omnibus bill is a tool for just doing a lot of amendments at the same time. So it's a, it's a legislative tool that has been used in different countries, Mauritius, Kenya, um, Australia, New Zealand, um, to, in the case of Kenya, to work on with their MSMEs. So for Nigeria, we're using it to clean up um, relics in our laws that are hindering the business environment. So for instance, you have things that have been in the laws for decades, maybe you need a seal or you need, you know, relics like that. And then more importantly, to deepen and uh, entrench to codify some of our PEBEC reforms. You know, PEBEC has been doing different interventions since 2016. Um, and as the administration comes to a close, it's important to consolidate them and give them a legal framework. So that's what we're doing with the, with the Omnibus Bill. We've been working with a number of um, MDAs. So you have MDAs like Export Promotion Council, NIPC, Investment Promotion, um, Commission, yeah, is it the other way around? Mm -hmm. Investment Promotion Commission, Expert Promotion Council, Council yes, yes. yes. Um, Financial Reporting Council. Different agencies wanted some things amended in their in their legislations, and then private sector had feedback, especially lawyers, on things that they wanted changed with the laws. So we w it went through a, a litmus test. I told you it was four years in the making, and we looked at what the effect would be on MSMEs, which is where our mandate resides. So we've come up with, we, we're amending about 21 pieces of legislation, and it's really to deepen, consolidate, and deepen for sustainability. Okay, let's go over to uh, the small claims courts, okay. mm -hmm. uh, wi which you mentioned earlier. I also do know that uh, small claims courts initiative is not just new to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I think in South Africa in 1984, Zimbabwe had theirs in 1993, Kenya 2016. Yeah. And Lagos State is the first state in Nigeria to have a small uh, claims court. For those listening right now, for those watching, and they don't even understand that concept, what, okay. wh what does it really mean? Because as a business person, people are also very disturbed and discouraged that oh, if I have issues mm -hmm. with my businesses or with clients, it would take a long time in the courts yeah. here in Nigeria. I could be there for years and all of that. What's, why this concept? Yeah. So it's, it's not a new concept, like mm -hmm. you said. The World Bank had been tracking whether countries have uh, a place where MSMEs can get soccer. So no, no company wants to have, especially a small business, cannot afford to be owed money for a long period of time. It affects their cash flows and, uh, and a lot of things. And you know that when the, legi when the judicial process is slow, I mean, justice delayed is justice denied. So a small claims court is a tool whereby 
a, a court can be carved out for expedited justice with relaxed rules of evidence. So for Nigeria, we spoke first of all with Lagos State Judiciary and the then Chief Judge, Justice Oke, uh, closely supported, funny enough, the current Chief Judge was also involved in the project. So we've had a very seamless transition with Lagos State. They also had been thinking of how to decongest the high courts. So it's, it's situated within the magistracy and the limit in Lagos State is about 5 million mm -hmm. naira. So if you're owed a little bit of money, you that. don't want to have to just write it off. And it seems too small to start going to the high court, getting a lawyer. You can actually self-represent. You you, the, so the, that means I can go to the court yes, and represent myself? Yes, you can go to the court and represent yourself. It takes as a maximum of 60 days. They don't always hit their target, but that's what their practice directions say. So there's practice directions. There's relaxed rules of evidence. A magistrate is able to relax the rules of evidence to allow just a lay person to, to self-represent. So it's for liquidated damages. In Lagos State, they also allowed arrears of rent. Yes. So a landlord can take a tenant to court. Yes. Because yes. I was also coming to that. Yes. Yes. So that's Lagos State. So Kano State was the next one. With Lagos State, since 2018, Lagos State Magistracy has dispatched over 4,000 cases at the small claims courts. They have 19 courts all across. They started with, I think, 10 or 12. They went up to 15. Now they have 19. And the last session we had with the chief judge about three weeks ago, they are instituting more because the demand is growing. So he said, Yaba alone needs more. So small claims court is a, is a tool that is really fast. To execution, it's another 30 days. So judgment in, in 60 days, execution by 30 days. Yeah. They have their own sheriffs. Um, they have their own registry. So it's a, it's a tool for quick, fast justice for commercial transactions. Yes, I was coming to that in terms of how much time uh, if there's judgment made, how much time will it take me to, to get back my yeah, money? Yeah, it's 30 and all days. Of them. It's 30 days. What if the, the person doesn't pay? Yeah, pay so me there's back the or pay my business back. There's the, there's the sheriff, there's the bailiff. So it's, it's liquidated damages. So it's either something gets, so rules of execution, something can be garnished. You may now have to, execution is a different ball game, but. By and large, most people just even settle because they're even shocked that they're in court. And you know that the, the litigant is not expending any funds. It's self-representation. There are no adjournments in small claims court. So you just go back to back. You can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, But Thursday. I'll need to pay, do some documentation. No, no, no. no. Is it free? Yourself. It's a form. So it's just a form. You go to the court. You pick up the form. You say what your issue is. You just fill the form. Very, very, and very. And I'll be giving a date to That's appear. like a thousand naira or something. So, and you get the date and you go. I've been to the small claims court, so I've seen it. Kano has, has dispatched over a thousand. And we have other states. We have um, Edo. Edo, Ogun, mm -hmm. Nasarawa, Jigawa, um, Ekiti. They also have small claims courts. Now we have Bielsa, a number of other states. FCT is coming up with their own small claims court. So we're in the process of doing the, the trainings for their magistrates. Are they, other states are not showing interest? Oh, they are. We just had a peer-to-peer -peer learning about three weeks ago. We had it in Lagos State. The chief judge of Lagos was there. The chief judge of Ogun was there. And several judges of high courts from different states, Anambra, Oshun, different states sent um, judges, because judges usually chair the committee that will then develop the practice rules. And uh, we have, we, we actually, we, we have, Facilitators from private sector, a few lawyers have been so committed over the years, and then the public secretariat team, we have a whole legal cluster on that team. I'm a lawyer, so we're a bit biased mm. to our legal reform, so we do mm. a lot with judiciary and with legislature, um, and even in terms of regulations, because we firmly believe that you need to underpin your reforms in the judicial framework and in the legislative framework, and in regulations at the executive end, so that there's something that private sector and government officials can use to make the reforms an actual reality and trench them firmly. I heard you say earlier five million. That is the max for Lagos yes, State. For Lagos. Or will each state have the liberty to each set Each state here? has the liberty. Kano is ten million. It's ten million. Lagos is, is five million. So anything above five million in Lagos, you go to the normal court. You yeah, go to the, the, the normal magistracy. Mag 
Or the High Court. Or the yeah, High Court. Yeah. But you said Kano is 10 million. Kano is 10 million. Ogun is less. But the, the chief judge was saying at the peer-to-peer -peer learning three weeks ago that she wanted to increase it. So it just depends on, on the commercial activity in the area and the amount of funds needed to, to make things move, like for traction. Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a magistrate's court near a market, maybe they're just some you know, repeat players, but you don't want to just write off the debt. So you just take them to the small claims court. And most of them, once they receive the form, they just pay. They just pay. <laughs> yes. What if they don't pay? Is there any option of going to prison or jail for well, those that don't it's, pay? It's not. It's, it's not. not there it's yet. not. Yes. It's not. It's not there. But but I think that I've not really heard that execution mm. has been because the sums are not, not that large. large. So by the time you have, it's not that large. But sometimes most businesses depend on that sum of money. That's to why survive. exactly. That's why you have the sheriff. It, uh, the small claims courts have their own registry and they have their own execution officers. So they work with the police to get it done. So I've okay. not really heard of cases where they haven't been frustrated in at the stage of execution. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about, I know you mentioned earlier and I wrote it down, uh, the ease of doing business in states. Does that mean that the second edition of the ease of doing business reports? Yeah. That was, is that what yes, you meant? Yes, okay. yes, yes. When are we expecting next month. the report next month? Yeah. What will that report entail? What is inside? Okay, so, so the report... And I, I heard you say earlier that Gombe State yes. was number one. Yes. Number one in what? In the ease of doing business. In the ease of doing business. Yes. But does this translate to the amount of FDI that comes into their states? Yes. I was in Gombe two weeks ago. Who are those investing? Yeah, well, they have now. And... and uh, a park, an industrial park, and they've got quite a few investors. So what it is is that we are not the ones are judging the states. The private sector in the states are telling us how easy it is to do certain things in the state. How easy is it to get... To like register a business? Yes. To, to register a business, to permit. pay your taxes. Land permit is under a week in Gombe. It's like seven days or something. Like so the getting my CFO? Yes. In Gombe State? Yes. Okay. Yes. Should I so relocate there? Well, that's <laughs> the thing. So that is what is interesting about the report because a lot of businesses are situated in the same old saturated places. Everybody has their business in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Kano, the urban uh, centers. But funny enough, when Smedan did the MSME mapping, mm -hmm. you have a huge amount of MSMEs. I think it's Ocean State that has the most MSMEs in the country. So. In each state, the facilitators, like a private consultancy, are asking MSMEs in that state specific questions. Now, the indicators for the ease of doing business report are security and infrastructure. Not as everybody just thinks of security and infrastructure, but certain things. How secure is your business? Do you have burglary break-ins? Are you able to get the police to come if somebody breaks into your shop? or if somebody steals your inventory, what happens? So those are the business-related security. Infrastructure, how much are your transportation costs, moving goods, the roads, the rail, those are the costs. Cost, speed, time to do things. Those are what's being captured. Access to information. Does the state have an investment promotion? Does the state have um, information on the website. Do you know what programs are on offer from government? If they're partnering with BOI to give single credit loans, are you aware of it? Those are the things that come under access to information. Workforce readiness. How many universities and, and um, tertiary education uh, vocational centers are in the state? If you run this kind of business, do you have a steady pool of labor? And then your regulatory environment, paying of taxes, states like Kaduna consolidated all their taxes, other, other issues, um, small claims courts. So when you look at their regulatory environment, land registration, can you use your um, land? Is it cadastral mapping? Can you go to a bank with your piece of land? Do you have so everything? Yeah. Alone. So those are the concrete things that are being judged. And we've just added economic opportunity, things like are you able to access FX? Are you able to import, export where you are? Those are the things that private sector answered. Those are the questions they answered. And they said, yes, in this state, 
it's easier to do these things than in another state. So the state that is last, I believe it's Zamfara right now, what private sector is saying That's is that... for the last report of for the last new report. Okay. No, this report, these results are not, not out, out yet. yet. It's very, very difficult to do all those things. And all the percentages are in the report, and the report is publicly available online. And states that businesses are saying it's easier or easy to do these things. And the, all the empiricals are there, where they score the best, where they score the least, and why. So the report is quite robust with the recommendations because we are harvesting recommendations, not really rankings. Rankings are good to put that competitive, positive tension and make states sort of energized. But we are harvesting um, recommendations by private sector. And this is where the shoe is pinching. So every time we have a report from any source, we're speaking with states and we're mapping things out technically and saying, this is where we need to prioritize. These are the most important things to MSMEs right now. So what was their, what's their feedback like? What has been their feedback like? The states to those recommendations? I'm talking about the first one. Yeah. Um, did Lagos come up in the first 10? No. Okay. So Babaji de Songulu. No. And that is the commercial city yeah, of, so of, you know, of the I country. I know that Lagos, Rivers, Lagos has Abuja. done some, some work um, in different areas. And I don't want to sort of... Uh, cast aspersions on, on any particular state, then it can be difficult. Even in the global rankings, you see countries like Singapore, New Zealand, topping global rankings mm. because they're smaller. In Africa, you see Mauritius, Cape Verde, topping global, you know, regional, African regional rankings because sometimes there's less complexity and but they are doing some things right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Not to you say can that, just no. copy and paste. But you can do everything right. Mm -hmm. And the complexity and the size of your market makes it such that it's difficult. So what I say globally, if you're top 50, so you, where would you find the U.S.? Where would you find um, Japan? Where would you find? But there are things that everybody has. Nobody is at the top of their game. Private sector will continue to say you can layer technology, this can be faster, this can be better. So every country, every state, every region has something to, to improve. And that's the essence of these exercises and listening to private sector. Okay, so I'm hoping that when that report comes out mid-November, we'll, we'll see. That, it's uh, going to be interesting. We'll get that and I'll I think be able to analyze states, that. Yes, states have been engaged. Um, states have known what the agenda is. And for the listening ear, for the states that have paid close attention and gone back to do the work, it's, it's granular work. Moving a reform takes what is the process. If there are 10, how do we get it down to three? How do we layer technology on this? It's not something you can wish to be number sure. one. It's yeah. either you do the work or you don't. And if others are doing more work and communicating, yeah. It's not enough to do the work. Yes. If, you're, if your MSMEs don't know that you're doing this for them or they don't know it's like there. Like the small claims court yes. now. So yes. those states need to do more yes. in terms of uh, giving information to, to yes. the public. Let's quickly talk about, because we have like one minute to, okay. to the end of the show. Let's talk about uh, governance innovation partnership with MIT as well okay. as... Uh, I know your public awards, I was, I think, on the last okay. one. Okay, so yes, you were, yes. you were, yeah. yes. So MIT, that's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, um, based in, in uh, the U.S., identified uh, this team as a leader in governance innovation. They have a governance lab, and so they've come into partnership with us after coming down a couple of times, and now we have a researcher with us for four months, we're working on, we chose a project on Executive Order 1. Okay. So that's the first Executive Order of this administration on transparency and efficiency of public service delivery. It's been a very important one. We've worked with the Office of Head of Service, Office of Secretary to the Government, and a number of MSM, um, of MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies, to try to consolidate and deepen specific things in the way we do business. So we're looking at it with fresh eyes from an external lens and coming up with the recommendations to deepen. Everything we're doing right now, Nancy, is about deepening. Uh, our PEBEC Awards will come up on the mm. 1st of December to recognize and appreciate public servants, civil servants, 
um, business partners, media partners I who have been. To say that too. Oh, but we've always recognized media <laughs> partners who have taken interest in our work, who have who have supported the reforms uh, in various ways. So everything we are doing is really focused on sustainability, from the bill to the report to the SABRE program to recognizing and to, to consolidating with MIT with fresh eyes and strong recommendations way forward on EO1 is all geared at making sure because the one question I get asked the most is what would happen after elections. elections. It happened in 2019, yeah. it's happening again. And what I say is that it really depends on Nigerian businesses. You demand of it from your government. Government is a continuum. It doesn't really matter who's there. Don't let the reforms unravel. Keep insisting that you want these reforms done. Done. I think we'll leave it to that. Yeah. And um, I know that I will have you again before the elections. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> so that we can recap yes. Yes, what's been done yes. uh, concerning business reforms. And we'll yes. have that. I have that like this for the new next government. <laughs> yes. You know, so we'll do that. So it's not, yes. it's not <laughs> goodbye yet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Jumoke. Thank you. Thank All you. right, I've been speaking with Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who is uh, the special advisor to President Buhari on the ease of doing business. And we've said quite a lot from SIFTAS to SABA to governance, innovation with MIT, uh, to the recommendations, to the reports that has been expected. So much to say. Thank you all for being a part of the show at today. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be and be that change that you want to see. I'll see you all again next time.